and the patient water loss is continuous and cumulative. What do I mean by that? It means that every day that the patient doesn't have water, there's a, a loss of water that's not being replaced, and the next day it's twice as much, and the next day it's three times, and so that's why we run out and uh, don't survive very long. And we can't stop from losing water. Animals can't, we can't. It goes out every time we take a breath, we ex uh, exhale a little bit of water vapor. We can't stop the kidneys. The kidneys have got to be, keep it running and they've got to excrete water. Uh, and then if there's any extraordinary losses, patients vomiting or there's intestinal excretion, uh, diarrhea and the like, uh, then there's even more water going. Or it could be sequestered. It could be going someplace where it's not available to the patient but accumulating within the body. So you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. And it's sure true for horses. I've experienced that. You've you got to just put them on IV fluids when they won't drink. And for your little small companion animals, same thing. You're going to have to do something if they're not drinking. Well, it turns out there's several practical and impractical ways to be able to get that water into the patient. Um, you could use a stomach tube. We often do that in the horses. If the digestive tract is intact and functioning, the beautiful part about it is it's inexpensive and it's very effective. And in this case, you can take pure water, doesn't have to have any electrolytes in it, and you can just put it into the animal and let the body take care of it, let the kidneys work on any that's too much and everything comes out pretty darn well. Another way, not used very often, is to uh, put a tube into the rectum and put water right into the rectum. Um, now, it's a little messy of course, but it works because a lot of water can be absorbed from the rectum and colon and the large colon so inside. So that's a nice way, it's a, a practical way to do it. Uh, Lots of folks with cats will give fluids subcutaneously, gets absorbed, gets into the bloodstream, and uh, is distributed. Um, and it's a quick, easy way to get some fluids to the patient if it's not practical to use an IV. But most of us use an intravenous way. Why? Because it's immediately effective. It's going to solve the problem quickly. And finally, in kind of a new way, to uh, get fluids into the patient is to drill a hole into a long bone, put a needle in there, and do what's called an interosseous injection of fluids. And amazingly, even to me it seems amazing, uh, that water that you put in that bone marrow will get absorbed, go into the system, and uh, benefit the whole animal. Well, it comes down to how much water do we need. Um, well, the need for water is based on the metabolic size of the patient. And that gets a little complicated. The metabolic size of the patient is the weight of the patient in kilograms to the three-quarter power. It's not squared, it's to the three-quarter power. And that's kind of tough for us to figure out uh, mathematically. Uh, but it can be done, and it has been done, and it's been verified that that's what it is. So as veterinarians, in a practical sense, we need an easier way. And there's all kinds of little rules to try to figure out how much is needed. But I've got one that's even better. I'm going to share it with you. Created it back for my students well back in the 80s. And it's accurate, works, and you'll be able to download it. If you just weigh the patient, either in pounds or kilograms, but convert it to kilograms, and you put it on a chart, which I'm going to show you, you can determine the patient's daily water needs quickly. Just, just look at the chart, run your lineup, run it over, and you'll find it, and I'll show you. Now, that's only the daily water needs. It doesn't take into account if they're vomiting, if they've got diarrhea, uh, if uh, they're breathing very fast, if they have a fever, you've got to kind of estimate and add on to that. But uh, you can, with this chart, at least get started and get pretty close to what you need on a daily basis. 
Now I've posted, I'll show you the charts next, but I've posted them uh, on our website. And so if you go to www.internationalwind.com forward slash tech dot html, you're going to see what I'm going to show you next. And also the, the ways to use it. So there'll be a little description about how to do it. Okay. This is a log graph, and that's what it takes to get that three-quarter power uh, printed out in, uh, in a line form, in a graph form. And down here on the bottom, um, I think I can show you that. Right down here is body weight. All right? And so there's 10 kilograms, there's 100 kilograms, and there's up to 1,000 kilograms. So that would be up to 2,200 pounds. That's bigger than most things you need. So unless you've got an elephant, which you don't treat too often, why this chart will do it. And then on this scale is the water requirements for 24 hours in liters. All right, now let me show you how to use this. If you just take, let's say we've got a, 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 30, uh, a 15 kilogram, which is a 33-pound dog, and we go to the chart, this chart on the, on the horizontal line, and we go to the 15 kilogram and just go up till we hit the line and go horizontally over to the graph on the left, the scale on the left, we'll be able to figure out how much water that patient needs. Uh, the idea that I give to you is to print this out, post it in, in the hospital, and just go over and look at it. You can figure out what's needed. So there's the 15 going over, and it works out that this patient needs 1,300, 1.370 1 liters for a day. That's, if you can get that in there, and there's no, only, no extra ordinary loss, no diarrhea, no vomiting, that'll take care of that patient that's not drinking. Easy is easy. So I encourage you to copy that and use it to get you on the right track. Well, here's, here's a, a picture of of my daughter's horse, and and that sham, and my dad's dog Puff, and so the question is, what is the difference between sham the horse and Puff the dog, as far as water needs go? And it, you got to look at it this way: it's not the species; it's not horse versus dog. It's not the size, one of them 1,000 pounds and the other maybe 20 pounds, or the weight. The way you've got to think about fluid therapy is it's the number of cells that each have that need water when the horse and the dog becomes ill. Now, I always used to say to my students that I always thought that large animal veterinarians were much, much more talented than small animal veterinarians for only one reason. They had billions and billions of more cells in their horses to treat as compared to the dog. Well, it's just not a way to say it to make you think that that horse needs a whole lot more water than the dog does uh, because of the number of cells, not the weight, not the species, the number of cells that are sick. And if you don't treat those cells and you lose enough cells, then the whole patient dies. <clears throat> okay, enough on getting the idea of fluid therapy and how much water might be needed. Now we got to get a few definitions and we got to have something that we can grasp and use in a general way. And one of the things I said I wanted to make sure you knew was what is a milli equivalent? Um, when we get the electrolytes, it's going to be in milli equivalents per liter. Well, okay. Now, it's a little bit complicated, but just sit and think about this. A milli equivalent is the molecular weight of a salt, like sodium chloride, in milligrams, divided by the valence, that is the, the weight of it, in 1,000 mLs of water. And so the example that I've made for you is sodium chloride, saline. All right, well, saline has a molecular weight of 58.5. Now, that is 23 for the sodium and 35.5 for the chloride. So you add those two together, and that, and it has a valence of one. It isn't a two or three that's with it. They're both with one and one makes up sodium chloride. Okay, so if we take 58.5 milligrams of salt in one liter of water, so we weigh it out on a scale, just take common household 